size and scale. One of the challenges that uh, animators face in uh, creating uh, believable uh, worlds is to establish a sense of size and scale for the things in those worlds. So, for example, if we want these uh, machines from the Star Wars films to seem monstrously big, what uh, how is that uh, done? Or these uh, dragons from uh, How to Train Your Dragon, uh, what is it that uh, gives you a sense that they are uh, small as opposed to being large? In other words, um, how do you establish a sense of uh, scale and size? Now, one of the simplest uh, ways of doing that is to use objects of known size and uh, show uh, contrast. So, uh, in that sense, the um, the poster on the left uh, is somewhat ambiguous in terms of the size of the dragon, because there's uh, nothing that we can really uh, compare it to. Uh, on the other hand, the poster on the right, uh, because we see the um, humans uh, sitting on uh, the back of the dragon, we have a sense that the the dragon is large uh, compared to uh, people. Even though these are uh, children, it's still uh, quite a large animal uh, because we know the, the size of uh, humans. Now, uh, in order for um, this comparison of relative size to be successful, you need a visual contrast. And uh, an example of uh, this is it, if you watch a football game, you might not be uh, that impressed about the size of the players when you are just watching uh, the um, uh, on TV and you see the, the players uh, on the field. Uh, and the reason they don't seem large is because they are all large. And so you don't have a visual uh, contrast. Now, when uh, one of those players is uh, standing uh, in a crowd of uh, ordinary size uh, people, then uh, you have some visual contrast and you notice uh, their large size. Uh, let's look at a quick uh, scene from uh, Jack the Giant Slayer. And uh, in this uh, scene, you, you notice that um, there's just watching the motion There's, uh -huh. So we see these uh, stalks coming out, but yeah, now You see, if you were if you were not familiar with um, the size of these giants, there's very little to indicate uh, in this uh, scene that they're actually giants. Uh, yeah, so. they're uh, they're quite ugly, but uh, <laughs> there's not a lot that indicates. Uh, visually that uh, they are uh, giants. Uh, well, one of them steps on um, what appears to be a, a human, but other than that. Now, this uh, challenge of establishing a scale from relative size is especially uh, difficult when you have uh, fantasy worlds, because there's uh, uh, in a fantasy world, uh, there's also there's uh, uh, often an ambiguity in terms of whether something is uh, very large or very small. So uh, we see in this uh, image from Lord of the Rings, uh, either the elephant is huge and the soldiers are ordinary size, or the elephant is ordinary size and, and they're tiny soldiers. And because it's a fantasy world, uh, it could be either either one. Uh, similar with uh, Alice in Wonderland, uh, she's approaching this door. 
either she's normal size and the door is tiny, or uh, the door is normal size and uh, she's a giant. So uh, again, because of the ambiguity, it's a challenge to establish uh, scale and size in um, these sorts of fantasy worlds. Now, another way of establishing uh, size is to use uh, visual cues such as linear perspective and atmospheric perspective. And we see an example of this in this uh, image. We also have an uh, object of known size, the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. And from uh, perspective, we have the smaller character in the foreground. And because the woman is uh, much further back, uh, but visually much larger in size, uh, she must be a giant. And then even further back, uh, because of the atmospheric perspective uh, being shrouded in the fog, uh, the, um, uh, the big insect uh, creature is uh, even uh, more gigantic. Now, this uh, use of perspective to establish size was uh, developed during the uh, Italian Renaissance, and before the Renaissance, uh, things, uh, images such as in this uh, painting on the left, uh, had um, all sorts of distorted uh, scale. So uh, the uh, people in this image uh, in the background appear to be coming out of a tiny uh, castle. Uh, more realistic uh, images were created later by the use of um, linear perspective, as we see in the uh, painting on the right. Uh, so uh, this use of um, linear geometric perspective, if we have a uh, horizon, then we can establish that the character here in the foreground is the same height as these characters um, further back in the background by tracing um, perspective lines uh, from the head of each character to the uh, vanishing point on the horizon and the feet. And so that, that establishes a way of um, determining the height of characters in the background uh, compared to characters in the foreground. This gives us very uh, realistic images by establishing size by perspective. Now, one of the challenges uh, of using uh, perspective to establish uh, size is that it's possible to uh, fool this visual cue by so-called forced perspective. So uh, in these uh, photos, uh, we realize that, for example, this uh, girl is not a giant in front of this uh, helicopter. It's simply that uh, she is much closer in the foreground. The helicopter is much farther uh, back and simply by the fact that her hand is near uh, the uh, visually near the top it makes us uh, think that she's touching it same thing with this photo of a mother and a daughter the daughter is far in the background but uh, the arrangement makes us think uh, at least initially that uh, the mother is holding a, a tiny uh, child in her hand a famous example is the, the Ames room where the floor is tilted, the ceiling is tilted, the tiles are um, distorted in shape. But when we look at it, uh, because we are so used to using perspective to establish size, um, it looks as if uh, the child is, is huge and the mother is uh, tiny. Now, uh, because visual cues don't always uh, successfully establish uh, size and scale, uh, we can also use physical cues to establish the size of an object or a character. Now, some of these physical cues are simple. For example, the uh, we know that a shorter pendulum swings uh, faster than a longer one, so we can use the timing of motion to give us a sense of uh, scale. Uh, other physical cues are uh, a lot more subtle. Uh, for example, the uh, fact that a small animal 
will have a faster heart rate than a large animal. Uh, here we see a graph of the heart rates in beats per minute for a variety of animals of different sizes, uh, from a mouse uh, to rabbit, dogs, donkey, elephant. And we see that the larger the animal, uh, the slower the uh, heart rate. Now, this is not some coincidence. Uh, this is a requirement uh, that is due to the laws of physics, and we'll see uh, why that is in uh, uh, some of the other uh, tutorials. But my point here is that uh, in the laws of physics, we uh, have this requirement that establishes this connection between the size of an animal and its heart rate, and the heart rate determines much of the timing of uh, an animal's behavior. So these small animals with this uh, quick heartbeat uh, tend to be uh, very quick and jittery and um, uh, active, whereas the large animals with their slow heartbeat uh, tend to be more lumbering and sluggish uh, by comparison. Now, this is uh, one of the challenges of using uh, motion capture for uh, character animation is that uh, in this case, and uh, here we see the, some images from uh, Jack the, the Giant Slayer where uh, motion capture was used uh, for the giants. Uh, when we are watching the motion, uh, the physical cues that we have from the timing of the motion uh, gives us a sense that uh, the characters are ordinary human size scale as opposed to uh, giant scale. So in summary, uh, there's various uh, visual cues uh, for scale, such as uh, relative size compared to known objects. Uh, linear perspective also establishes scale by connecting uh, visual size with uh, distance to uh, the viewer. Uh, visual cues, however, are not always sufficient uh, to successfully establish scale because uh, we have problems such as lack of visual contrast, uh, ambiguous sizes, especially in, in fantasy worlds, uh, the issue of distorted um, perspective, and, and so forth. So there are also physical cues that uh, give us a sense of size and scale. Uh, some of the simplest ones are the timing of the motion, uh, but there are uh, many others, and we'll see those in the uh, next few tutorials. So, see you then.